Hi everybody, so sh Shalom, how are you? I pray you are doing well. Listen, on this video, I want to talk to you about are you angry with God? If you are, then this video is for you. I want to take you down a little bit of my journey and share with you the places where I could have been angry with God. Now, there were several times that I could have been angry with God, but I'm just going to go down to the ones that the Lord highlighted to me. I want you to know that God works all things together for our good, for those that love Him and those who were called according to His purposes. Amen. Now, I know with things going on like the coronavirus, let's talk, oh, excuse me, let's talk about that. People have died. Lots of people have died. There are people who are in fear. There are people who are in confusion, and that is of the enemy, but that is not what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about, are you angry with God? Let me take you through a couple instances in my life. You can get my book, The Unwoven Tapestry of Love. Um, you can order it on Amazon.com. If you order it through me, just DM me in my Facebook or Instagram. And I want to spend you, send you a little love gift with your order. And I'll send you the instructions once you do that. Um, I've gone through, so let's talk about loss. Are you angry with God? Are you upset because you've lost someone? Are you mad because you don't understand why? Um, or have you been in a marriage that did not work out and that person left you or cheated and you're angry at God as to why? Have you lost a, a child uh, at an early age and you're mad and you've asked God why? Have you been in poverty, in, in uh, not a good place mentally? Ha are you mad? Are you mad at God? I want to share these couple stories with you. And I want to encourage you and I want to inspire you. Please don't be mad at God. Listen, the enemy is in the world. He is uh, a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour to kill, steal, and destroy from. In a war, there are casualties. There are many casualties in war. Even though that war gets won, it doesn't mean it's not without its casualties okay sometimes we get caught in the crossfire of being one of those casualties but does that mean that God has meant it for your harm absolutely not absolutely not as a matter of fact sometimes when you're a casualty of war it often brings a process of change to where you can be enlightened with wisdom that you've never understood before. So let me take you through two instances, or maybe three. When my older son died, I specifically, specifically, even in my grief, you can read it in my book, The Unmoving Tapestry of Love, I was in a corner on the ground just in such deep despair because it's one thing to lose an adult in their 90s or whatever you know they lived a good life but to lose your child young at seven he just turned seven okay he was just turning into a little young man um is devastating and as I was sitting in that corner in my kitchen while everybody else was around being busy and taking care of my younger son because I could not even take care of myself at that point, I heard the Lord say 
devil, I rebuke you. Leave her alone. And even in my grief and in my trauma, I clearly, this was not an impression. That's why I say don't let nobody tell you that you can't hear the voice of God because you can. I've heard his voice audibly at least two times audibly not impressions not from the spirit within literally like you're hearing my voice and that was one of the times and I saw myself in a grave deep down you know when they go they say they dig it a, a grave six feet I literally saw myself in that dirt six feet under in the hole and that's when I heard God speak audibly to the devil and he said to the devil, Satan, I rebuke you. Leave her alone. You know why? Because I didn't have any ammunition. I was a casualty of war. I could not fight any longer. I was wounded. But God stepped in. God stepped in in my heartache and my heartbreak. And he told the devil to leave me alone how could I get angry at God even though I just lost my son the Lord was showing himself strong that he was with me even through my heartache even through my pain even through my trauma and so once I was able to come up out of that that helped me that literally turned on a light bulb to help me to start on my way to process to get to healing. I was down at the baseball field where my kids used to play and I was sitting on the bleachers and I was still devastated. That didn't mean I just jumped up and I was like, okay. And I heard the Lord again. Yeah, so okay, that would be, that would be. So I heard the Lord again say, Sherry, I need you to forgive. I need you to forgive just like I forgave the world when my son was crucified because there's a plan in it and I need you to forgive or people will never know my love because if you don't demonstrate that then they will not see it at my older son's funeral there were so many people that came from officials to police officers to firemen to the superintendent of the school to the schools, the teachers, everything that people couldn't even fit in the funeral home. They had to add extra chairs and then they had to wait for some people to leave so that other people can come in. Okay. When I heard God speaking to me, I could not be angry at God. I did not ask God why. You know what I asked for? I asked for strength to hold me up, to give me healing, to show me the way through this devastating trial of being a casualty of war in his kingdom. And because I knew that God was fighting for me, because I heard God's voice audibly, I was able to move forward and go through my process of healing, which took a couple years before I could really get back up on my feet. Let's go, let's fast forward to two years ago. Now there's way many other things that have happened to me since then from, from, uh, being divorced to um, almost dying a couple times to being in an in uh, accident. So it's all kinds. But let's fast forward again. So two years ago, uh, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. We had no idea. We had no idea except I started to notice that she was losing weight over the year before she was diagnosed and I thought well maybe because she's nearing seven um nearing you know getting older and they're 69 or whatever that you know that's I, I, I've 
been a CHHA for over 12 years, so I work with the elderly. I know, you know, some they don't eat a lot. They don't eat like they used to and everything. So when we found out, you know, she started getting uh, more lethargic. She didn't want to do any activities. She didn't want to go to any family functions because uh, I used to take her to all the family functions we knew something was wrong and then she was bleeding internally so we went to the hospital and then she didn't leave for three weeks had an operation and they told us they got it all and the funniest thing is that they didn't know how it even got there because usually cancer is in your cells she had a ball this size they said nine centimeters like a baseball attached to her urethra, ureters, I think it's called ureters. It wasn't even in her body, it was outside just hanging on. I know the devil is a liar, okay? So they got it all, they said. They cut out small part of her intestine and everything, but they wanted her to follow up with chemo and treatment. So she did for a while. And we stood in faith and we believed in faith that God was going to heal my mom, that those doctors did the best they could do, that they got, they said they got all that cancer out. And then when she went to her next checkup, they said, well, we found it's during the pathology reports, we found some cells at the base you know, of it, and, um, we want to just keep an eye on that, and so, you know, keep, keep doing treatment, so she was, and she was getting worn out, she was getting tired, she was a casualty of war, and I was taking care of her, not only was I a caregiver to other people, but I was taking care of her 24, 24, 7, and going to work, and coming home, and managing the house, and doing all that, I was getting burnt out and it was just me and my son so I did not get angry at God when the time came my mom said I don't want to do it no more it was her choice and I made sure I mean I know my mom was saved my mom said she got saved when she was little she was with Billy Graham but I made sure to pray that prayer with her again about two weeks before she passed. So I know my mother is walking on the streets of gold with my older son, Amen, and my grandmother. So I continued to pray, but I didn't get angry with God. And then the Lord took her home. So the opposite happened of what we believed. Why did that happen? I don't know. I never asked God that question. I never got angry with God as to why she didn't get healed from cancer here. She's healed, obviously, there. So my point is, is that we will be casualties of war here. You know, I'm a firm believer that when people have had enough, they've had enough. And I believe that God is merciful that he, that my, if, if he came to my mother at any time when she was half unconscious or almost unconscious to the end and said, Barbara, would you like to come home now? I can guarantee she said yes. Another thing that helped me when my um, older son was killed was someone said to me, Sherry, you know, if if Jesus asked your son if he wanted to go back to the earth, he probably said no. And I guarantee that's happened because once he's seen up there, he would have been like, I'm staying. I mean, why not? You know, now there are people that visit heaven and the Lord does give them a choice and says, do you want to stay? You want to go back? Go back because, and then he tells them there's a plan and what the plan is. And the people say, yes, I want to honor you, Lord. So I'm going back. My point is, I didn't get angry, ever, 
because I knew God was with me. I knew that whether they were here on this side, we would get through it. I knew if they went to the other side, they have already made it and they are well. Why should I be angry? Forget about angry. Forget about bitterness. Forget about the questions. How about you start to heal from your traumas? How about we start to heal from unanswered questions? How about we start to heal so that we can finish why God left us here on this earth to complete the things we need to do? Our lives are not over. So we're still here for a reason and we must carry on in the fight as army, as the army of God, as soldiers in the army of God, regardless of the casualties of war that we go through. The enemy will oppose you in any way he can. Read the story, Job. Read the story, Job. God brought up Job before the enemy, before Satan. Satan didn't come to God and said, how about Job? Satan only questioned God about Job after the Lord brought Job up to Satan. Come on, we got all these theological blah, 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 kind of things about how God works when the Bible says that God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. So how about we rest in that? How about we rest in the peace that we know that as Christians, we believe if we walk in faith, that we stand on his promises that are yes and amen, that we stand on the word until we see differently, that we don't question God when things go counterproductive to what we thought was best for people on the earth, and that whatever affects us, negatively or traumatizes us that we will declare and decree that we will get through it by starting a healing process that will lead us back on the right path to worshiping and serving our great creator who put us here because he loved us and he cared enough about us to always be by our side and make sure we get to where we need to go. Amen. How many times have you maybe backslidden in your life? And I'm raising my hand because I have. And the Lord wouldn't leave me alone. He would do certain things or bring certain people around. And I knew that I better get up out of here quick or stop doing this quick because this is just leading down the wrong way. And I had to listen up. God will not stop drawing near to us. He will constantly, he's a loving God. He is just, but he is loving. He's just because he wants the best for us, just like a good parent wants for their children as well. Amen. So let's rearrange our mindsets. Let's stop accusing God of being a bad father. Let's stop accusing God of being evil and, and a judging judgmental evil God let's stop judging God as being a bad God or you know he doesn't exist because he did this to me no let's pray Lord in the name of Jesus I pray that we are forgiven for all the negative thoughts for all the wrong thoughts for all the bad thoughts for all the unconscious thoughts that we've had that that made you out to be a bad daddy a bad God and we thank you that you are our protection you are our shield you are our strong tower you are our advocate you are the rose of Sharon you are the the uh, the very peace of of our life you are uh, righteous and you are just and we pray that we would keep our eyes focused on you and focused on what you have to um, 
make us uh, realize through our processes to become the best version of who you created us to be on this earth so that we can glorify you in all that we do and so that our hearts will not stay bitter. I bind up bitterness. I bind up hate. I bind up sorrow. I bind up fear. I bind up pain. I bind up trauma over you in the name of Jesus. Jesus, and I loose the peace of God. I loose the healing anointing of God. I loose the breaker anointing of God. I loose deliverance over you in the name of Jesus. Be whole in Jesus' name and love your God. He loves you. It's about relationship. It's about intimacy. It's daily, and we need to be active in that relationship with God every single day. No one wants to be mad and angry. So why do we want to be in a relationship with God and be mad and angry? Ask yourself that question. I love you. Talk to you soon.